You will learn how to expose AKS applications using Azure Application Gateway and an Nginx Ingress controller. When we want to integrate an Azure Application Gateway to expose AKS applications, there are actually two options to expose those applications. First option is called the AGIC, Azure Application Gateway Ingress Controller. In this mode, the application gateway will be managed by a component called AGIC, which is a pod that will run inside the AKS cluster. This pod will watch and will monitor the Kubernetes resources like the ingress. And for each change of these resources, this AGIC pod will go to update the configuration of the Azure application gateway. And then the Azure application gateway will route the traffic directly to the pods. So it doesn't go through an intermediate pods or intermediate uh, application like ingress controller. This is good in terms of performance where it reduces the number of uh, ops. But actually the drawback of this architecture is that updating the application gateway each time we have a change within the ingress resources means that the end application will be out of service for sometimes several uh, few minutes. That's because updating the application gateway, actually it's a, a heavy operation that takes time. And in addition to that, this application gateway is owned by the cluster itself. It's owned actually by this AGIC component. We will suppose that it owns the application gateway, so it will, it will manage it as it really owns that resource. If you try yourself to make any change or override any configuration, then your changes will be then overridden by this AGIC component. This makes it little bit difficult to share one application gateway across multiple AKS clusters. Actually, that's doable, but you need to pay lots of attention and you'll need some extra configuration to make that happen. The second option to integrate an application gateway with an AKS cluster is by not using the AGIC, the application gateway ingress controller, but instead we can replace that AGIC with a real Nginx ingress controller. So that way the client traffic will go through first the application gateway and then from there it will go to the ingress nginx controller and then the engine the Ng nginx controller will route back that traffic to the aks pods so here clearly we'll add another hub for the user traffic but again this nginx ingress application could scale out to handle that uh, traffic and what we gain here is that here we decouple the part that should be owned by the infrastructure team, which is the application gateway and its public IP address. That way, the, this infra team will manage the TLS certificates, the DNS records, and they will enable or disable the WAF and be able to configure it as they want. However, now for the application team, they will own and manage the ingress resources and only their application and application routing. So they will own the ingress resource right here and their application pods and services. And that decoupling makes it also easy for the application gateway to be shared and used for multiple AKS clusters. Here I've showed it within the same virtual network as the AKS uh, cluster, but actually this component, this application gateway could live within another virtual network that could be peered to the AKS virtual network, either peered directly or through a hub virtual network. Let's see next demonstration on how to set this up. And this demonstration will expose an AKS application through an Nginx ingress controller that in its turn will be also exposed through an Azure application gateway. The lab for this uh, demonstration is available on this GitHub repository under folder 225 where you will find the Terraform code and the YAML file that we'll use in order to create this infrastructure and also create the required resources. Make sure to clone that repository on your local machine and open it in your VS code. And then from here, first thing to do is to deploy the required infrastructure. So for that, I'm using Terraform, which is an infrastructure as code tool that will help you to deploy easily the required resources. So the resources we'll be using today are the AKS cluster, which is our main uh, resource right here. So this will deploy an AKS with the required version. Actually, this the version here could be anything. What we'll do today is not uh, dependent on any specific version. And then we specify some network configuration. We make sure to create a default node pool. And then here we enable the web app routing add-on within AKS cluster. This will enable the creation of an Nginx ingress controller by default that will be managed by Microsoft. 
note that here until the day I'm recording this video uh, we should be able actually to create an Nginx ingress controller with internal load balancer by specifying this attribute right here but seems that there is a bug right here so I believe it should be fixed within a few few days after the AKS cluster here we go to create the Azure application gateway where here we specify a public IP address that will expose the applications for the application gateway and then we specify that we want to use the v2 of the application gateway and with it you can enable or disable the WAF feature web application firewall if you want to add security to your uh, application and note here for the backend address of the application gateway we configure it actually to route the traffic to this static IP address which is 10.10.1.10 we'll see later what is that uh, IP address and why it's uh, configured as a static IP right here then these resources will be attached to a virtual network each one to its own uh, subnet so we have a subnet for the AKS cluster subnet for the application gateway and another optional subnet for uh, Jumpbox virtual machine if you want to do some troubleshooting and then we have another additional subnet for the ILB for the internal load balancer that will be created by the Nginx ingress uh, controller so optionally here you can put that internal load balancer within the same uh, subnet as the cluster or you can also put it in its own uh, subnet all of these resources will live within the resource group that I've created right here so then next to deploy those resources using Terraform you need to have Terraform installed on your machine then you run the command Terraform init and apply with auto approve and within four or five minutes all of these resources will be deployed automatically in your subscription so then you will get two resource groups that will be created one main resource group that will have the AKS cluster control plane the application gateway its public IP address a Jumpbox virtual machine which is with its network interface card and a virtual network and within the second resource group you will get here the node resource group actually which are the resources that are used by the AKS cluster once that's done we go to the next part which is here deploying the application and the application we'll go to deploy today is described in this yaml configuration file so we'll go to create a deployment that will deploy this sample image that is called the inspector gadget that will expose environment variables and some useful information coming from the pod where it's uh, installed and then we create a service this is a private uh, service that will expose that application that service will be also exposed through the ingress resource where we point to that a service called a web app on serve it on for uh, 80 and note here for the nginx part we are using the end ingress uh, class name so here we are using actually the nginx dash internal from where comes this uh, class name so this comes actually from the nginx ingress controller which is the api used by the app routing uh, add-on that is available within the aks cluster we can check actually within our AKS cluster here I'm connected to that cluster I can get nodes and I also can do cube control get pods and services from within the app routing system which is the module that contains the uh, app routing components so here we can see uh, pods that will serve the nginx uh, ingress controller and we can also see some resources that are created here and if I type here cube control get ingress class like this so we'll get here the default ingress class that will be created by the app routing which is this one here web app routing .com, which will expose the ingress controller on a public ip address but you can just go to delete this default uh, uh, ingress class and create as we will do here create another nginx uh, ingress uh, controller that will be using an internal load balancer that's why I have here this annotation that says the load balancer internal is set to true and the load internal load balancer should be created within the subnet dedicated for the load balancer and then the that internal load balancer will use a static IP address from that subnet which is 10.10.1.10 make sure of course that uh, IP address is within the range of the internal load balancer which is uh, or within the range of the subnet which is 10.10.1.0/24 so let's go to deploy this uh, application keep control apply dash f kubernetes app.yaml once it's deployed right here 
we can check for the pods and the services if they are created all is good right here and now you can also check for the ingress and i'll watch for the changes right here and here i'll give it a second before it will appear right here the ip private ip address of my ingress controller which is the one that i've specified right here and you can verify that from the azure portal when you navigate to the node resource group we go to the kubernetes internal so this is the um, internal load balancer that will be used by nginx ingress controller so from here if you go navigate to the front end ip configuration you should be able to view this private ip address that will go to route or that means that the application gateway will get the traffic and it will route it to this private uh, ip address it will route it to this uh, ip which is the ip of the internal load balancer because within the uh, backend pools we have specified actually this internal load balancer will route the traffic to the Kubernetes uh, uh, nodes. So that's this, the part described right here with this uh, arrow from Nginx internal to the AKS cluster. Now this Nginx ingress is exposed through that private IP address and it will get the traffic from the application gateway. So within Terraform we have already configured our application gateway to get the traffic and forward it to the backend pool which is that private IP address and we can check this uh, configuration within the resource group or within the Azure application gateway that lives from inside the same resource group at the AKS cluster. So from here, you can see within the backend pools that we have one backend pool that will route the traffic to the this private IP address. So we are specifying here the target type should be an IP address or FQDN and then we send the traffic to that private IP of the internal load balancer. The application gateway actually then will be exposed through front-end IP co uh, configuration which will use a public IP address which is the IP address that we have created earlier that have this uh, re address right here so I'll copy that and go to navigate to that IP and try to access the application and yes here it is my application now is served from the application gateway that did route the traffic to the Nginx ingress controller and then to the pods. And that was how to expose AKS applications using application gateway and Nginx ingress controller. Thank you.